evening. Welcome. As we gather for our last midweek Lenten service, this uh, we are fast approaching Palm Sunday and Holy Week, so we're glad that you are gathered with us as we move into Holden Evening Prayer. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. Shine within your people here. 
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. We continue our series, Who Do You Say I Am? And, and actually, this will be the end of that series, Who Do You Say I Am? Tonight, we're going to talk about Jesus being a life bringer. It has to do with the story of Lazarus. It comes from John 11. I want to read verses 43 to 44. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to him, unbind him and let him go. This is significant for us, especially now as we're looking at this pandemic and the fear that it's bringing, but also the death that it's bringing to us. And we look for hope, any kind of hope that we can have in the midst of this. It is through this story that Jesus is going to show us how he is bringing hope in the resurrection to us. So I want to share a bit about the significance of this story. First, this story, this, uh, the, the story of the raising of Lazarus from the dead, is actually the last story in the Gospel of John. And it's placed there for a reason. John has some significant pieces about this raising of Lazarus that are going to be important for us. First off is the fact that Jesus returns to certain death. He is going back to the place where, well, in fact, in John 11, verses 7 and 9, it says this. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? You see, Jesus knows that they're out to get him. And without fear, he declares that he's going to go back. The significant piece for us here is that Jesus willingly goes into the fire, willingly goes to the place where his death is almost certain. Another significant piece about this miracle is that Jesus clearly calls on God. It's important for us to know always that when Jesus does miracles, he makes sure that the people understand that the miracle comes from the power of God, that it's not Jesus who's doing the action, but that he receives his power from God. In John 11, 41 to 42, it says this, So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me, I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. What's important here is really this is a sign for, of Jesus telling the people who he is, because only God raises from the dead. And so Jesus is demonstrating that his power comes from God. And he is making a statement here without saying the words that he is the Son of God, the Messiah who's come into the world. The other significance about this miracle, it, there, it, it, there's no secrecy in this miracle. Prior to this, Jesus would always say, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone what you've seen or what you've heard here today. And that's because it couldn't be rushed. His time here on earth couldn't be rushed. And so he needed people to be silent. Now, they hardly ever were, but this time he doesn't say that. 
This time it's as if he's almost giving them permission to go out into the crowd to tell others about what's happening. In fact, the story of Lazarus ends with verse 45. I want to start with verse 45 and read a little bit farther so you hear what happens after the miracle. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what he had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the council and said, What are we to do? This man is performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and destroy both our holy place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all. You do not understand that it is better for you to have one man die for the people than to have the whole nation destroyed. He did not say this on his own, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus was about to die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but to gather into one the dispersed children of God. So from that day on, they planned to put him to death. You see, this is the sequence that's happening in the Gospel of John, is that the crowd, some of them come to believe in Jesus, and that puts Jesus in danger. Because the leaders come to know that the more people who believe in Jesus, the more that they worship him, and the less they will follow the leaders. They're losing their power, and so they need to do something about Jesus. And so what they are going to do is put him to death. The piece here that's important is that as Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, so God will raise Jesus from the tomb. God, who knows what's coming, knows that the good that will come out of this is that, yes, Jesus is going to die for the nation, but not just the nation, not just the Israelites. Jesus is going to die for you and me, but God will raise him from the dead. You see, that's the hope that we have in this pandemic as well, is that Jesus is our life bringer. Hear the words in John 11, 25 to 26. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Jesus is our life bringer, not just to Lazarus, which was a significant miracle in the story of Jesus' life, but Jesus is our life bringer even today because we remember that this place is finite and will end, and that one day we will be with Jesus in eternity because if we live a death as Jesus died, we will live a resurrection as Jesus was raised. May we live in that hope. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness shall not overcome it.
great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to Stay at home, live in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.